We are making really good way. We left about seven o'clock in the morning and it's about eight o'clock in the morning now. And last night, I, t I turned this on. This is my tracking through my Delorum about an hour into the journey. So it says we're making eight 0.12 miles per hour average, and we've gone 193 miles. That's about 175 nautical miles. So that's really fast. And if we keep this up tonight, we're gonna average about eight knots, which means 200 miles. So that would be cool to get a 200 mile a day, and we've never done that. It would make our journey to Ecuador very fast. We would be getting there uh, Thursday morning. So it's Tuesday now. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can get there in 72 hours. That would be like awesome, record-breaking fast. Maine is double reefed. It has been all night and that's perfect. Um, I took out the single reef, so we can only double reef and triple reef. We're still trying to catch that elusive fish. Sailing hasn't been bad, it's just been, the seas have a very short period, all the waves. So it's been very wet and very rough. My window needs to be re-bedded and that hatch needs a little more um, weather sealant. But all these hatches that I tied down are, are all, they're all holding, so that's really good. This last passage we made that was 700 miles was horrible. And this one is not so bad. At least it's dry. It's rough though, and I haven't gotten much sleep. That said, wow. You should get some video of this. This is what sailing a small catamaran to weather looks like. So it is pretty rough, and a catamaran does what is called hobby horsing. So the front of the boat lifts out of the water and then slams back down onto the waves. Both are sailed, when they're fully out, they go all the way to the top of the map. But if you have a look at this scene, and I would say it's filmed in about 15 to 20 knots, we have reduced them quite substantially. The main is about 45% and the jib at about 75% of their normal size. The one thing that we really, really learned during the first year of sailing a catamaran was to slow down if the seas get high. Because we used to just slam and launch up ways like there was no tomorrow and just racing to the other location. But what we didn't realize is how much stress there really is on the standing rigging of the catamaran. While a monohull leans during stronger winds and spills out the wind, the catamaran doesn't do that. In practice, that means that a catamaran is always handling the full force of the wind. That's why it's so important to always pay attention to every change in wind and to then reduce the sail according to the seascape. Anyways, I just wanted you guys to know that sailing really fast on a catamaran is not an art. It's all about slowing it down. Oh, 
We went up forward. That was fun. It's not every day we're in seas like that. And as always, things break on Zingaro. In this case, it was the furler block. The sun got to the crappy line I used to put it on. And so I used thin Dyneema and covered it with some of the same crappy line. And that kept the UV to a minimum and it's still like that today. This is the trouble with all sailboats. They're consistently in motion and mostly in a very oxidizing, very sunny environment. So you have UV damage, chafing damage, and saltwater damage and corrosion. There are things you can do to mitigate this. For instance, you can use UV covers, chafing protection, etc. But you'll never really get away from boat work. You'll only drive yourself crazy. My rule is, when it breaks, make it stronger than it was before. You can use soft shackles instead of hard. You can use chafing protection, like hoses around lines or you can just pick a different material. We ended up having to move this block yet again and finally it didn't chafe anymore and we could get on with our lives. That is until we found something else chafing. Such is life on a sailboat. This has been the nicest crossing so far that we've had together. I mean, that we've had ever, right? It's been the longest one. It's been the longest one and it's been from Isare Coco so now, 60 miles offshore from the coast of Ecuador, it's been all on the same tag. We've yeah. just been reefing a little, letting the sheets out a little, pulling them in again. We reef, and then we let them out, and then we yeah. reef, and then we shake it, and then we reef. That's we've, so comfortable. For the last like 200 miles, we've been triple reefed on the main and double reefed on the, on the jib. Yeah. So just the minimal amount of sails up, and we've been doing an average of seven, seven and a half knots, which is we did 180 miles our first night. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We've, that's that's pretty faster than we've ever gone for that duration. And that's beating the whole way. We've been beating the whole time. Mm. I'm interested to see what's broken on the boat. Nothing major has broken. Just the the reefing line broke. The jib the furler, furler. The, the furler, furler chafed through yeah. and the reefing line is chafing. So I'm going to have to fix that. Oh, and the, the halyard for the the jib is chafing as well, but we fixed that. Oh, well it comes out of the mass. It's just like yeah. chafing problems with all the, the lines, because if you're on one tack the entire time, always doing the same kind of motion. But the boat is dry, and it's better than it's ever been in the entire history of me owning this boat. It's like yeah. tits right now. So I am super happy about that. We had a dry passage of a thousand miles. The passage has been so uneventful, which is always a positive thing. Yeah. We can talk about passages on a boat. If we would have food, this would be really pleasant. <laughs> the only thing we caught were squids and flying fish that are now drying up on the deck because they just, I guess they jumped on the boat or got washed up. Planning on eating them? No, I'm gonna use it as bait. It's been a pretty rough passage, this last um, 500 miles of it, because we've been beating, so every once in a while we'll just take a big wave and come down and water over the boat. And it scares that, me every time. <laughs> it scares, it's scary, but my rigging is holding up great, it looks fine, it's not chafing. It's chafing a little bit where the sails touch it, where, where when we tack, which is my own fault, I should have put chafing protection on it. Yeah, and the baby stay. I'm gonna redo those here shortly and we're gonna put some shape protection. Yeah, with the crack and stuff. Three nights is a lot for I can't I can't imagine doing like 30 30 nights crossing. What you doing? She can't hear anything because she got an ear infection when we left Coco. So did I, but she's now deaf. Which is actually better for our relationship, both captain and 
Oh, she can hear. She, she heard that. <laughs>